If you're in business, you probably have a website, but can your site handle your growth? How many visitors before your site slows down or crashes? What about storage and data security? From web hosting to virtual servers, Pair Networks provides the online infrastructure you need to start, grow, and flourish. When it comes to security and updates, don't worry, we've got you covered. Our 24-7 U.S.-based customer support is the best in the industry. No frustrating chatbots are sitting on hold for hours. Check out Pair.com today to learn more. That's P-A-I-R dot com. The Agile Brand. Welcome to the Innovation Economy podcast, where we look at the factors that drive business growth, including how people, processes, platforms, and places work together to create the future of work. I'm your co-host, Greg Kilstrom, advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 Brands as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author and speaker and host of the award-winning podcast, The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom. This episode is part of our Inspiration Plus Location series, where we look at what it's like to build businesses, work, and live in an innovative place, and the role of location in a hyper-connected, hybrid work world. The Innovation Economy Inspiration Plus Location podcast series is brought to you by Arlington Economic Development, representing Arlington, Virginia, which is one of the most dynamic economic hubs in America with resources for businesses from the Fortune 500 to startups and everything in between. You can learn more about them at www.arlingtoneconomicdevelopment.com. To listen to the latest episodes or sign up for the Innovation Economy newsletter, go to innovationeconomy.show or click follow on your favorite podcast app to make sure you hear the latest episodes. And now onto the show. Today, we're going to talk about the future of commercial office space and how partnering with economic development organizations can help businesses maintain vibrant communities that create great places for people to live and work. This is a special episode brought to you by Arlington Economic Development in Arlington, Virginia. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Ryan Tuhill, Director of Economic Development at Arlington Economic Development. Ryan, welcome to the show. Greg, thanks for having us, and thanks for uh, letting AED participate in this uh, podcast series with you. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to talking about this with you. So why don't we get started with you giving a little background on yourself and your role at Arlington Economic Development? Yeah, sure. I've been with the county and with economic development here in Arlington for just over a year. Uh, I joined in November of 2022. And when I joined, I came, I previously was with the city of Alexandria, which is a jurisdiction just south of Arlington. Uh, so I've been in the Northern Virginia region since uh, the early 2000s, um, working in local government and uh, been in economic development since about 2015. And the, uh, the reason I wanted to join Arlington's team was because I was really looking to not just advance my career in economic development and work for a really progressive county but we also, it was also just seeing unique challenges and opportunities that Arlington has before them and wanted to participate and bring some ideas of my own to the table. You know, we're, we're recognized as a leader in the economic development space. So joining such a, a great team with a long track record and, and uh, excellent history of blending kind of community and, and economic development together was really an exciting opportunity for me. So uh, when the when the chance to join came up, and fortunately I was selected, I, I couldn't get here fast enough. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and we're definitely going to talk about um, several of those aspects. And you know, here at the the Agile Brand, we are headquartered in Arlington, Virginia, as well. So I'm maybe a little partial here, but <laughs> um, but definitely want to want to talk about this. So let's let's start by talking about uh, some of the opportunities as well as some of the challenges that. An organization like AED and a location like Arlington, Virginia works with. So for those listening who may be a little less familiar with Arlington, Virginia, can you describe, you know, what makes this location so interesting from an innovation standpoint and the breadth of types of businesses that exist within the area? Sure. So we really benefit from a strategic location uh, in the in the nation's capital or just outside the nation's capital, I should say. Arlington is surrounded by the federal government and, uh, and and a number of agencies that are doing really cutting edge, innovative work in spaces like defense and aerospace, uh, healthcare, and many other 
areas that the federal government works in each and every day. So we benefit from being kind of co-located with those groups. And as a result of that, we attract uh, a lot of companies that want to be proximate to decision makers and federal funding. Uh, so that's been something that Arlington's benefited for for many decades. What's unique, though, is that that, uh, that history has evolved into now uh, a situation where we're seeing a lot more private sector technology companies want to also be in the region. And what's driving that, in addition to the federal presence and the dollars that are being invested here, is the fact that we're one of the largest uh, tech talent communities in the country. We have a significant tech workforce, a uh, very experienced workforce. We have a significant number of colleges and universities that help to produce tech talent um, each and every year. And that's really attractive to companies because I think what we've seen since the pandemic is a real shift in focus towards companies wanting to be in locations where they can hire a high quality uh, workforce. And we have that here in Arlington and in the greater Washington, D.C. region. So that's really helped to advance our, our economy away from a uh, what probably was a dependency on the federal government for several decades to now having that as a foundational bedrock of our of our economy, but being able to pursue new private uh, sector companies uh, that are doing really innovative work in the technology space. Companies like Amazon, who has their second headquarters located here, uh, a number of large aerospace and defense companies that are located here. And we're also just seeing a significant growth in our startup and mid-sized technology firms in everywhere from fields such as cybersecurity to Internet of Things. So that has been a real benefit for us in the past couple of years, and especially something we're trying to capture and work towards um, gaining more uh, ground in in the coming years. Yeah, yeah. And so although some of the post-pandemic challenges with commercial office vacancy is not unique to Arlington, of course, what, what are some of the ways that AED is infusing and encouraging creative thinking among staff to, to fill some of that vacancy? Well, first, it's it's taking a different mindset. When I got here, I really wanted to shift us away from thinking it of solely as vacancy, office vacancy as a problem. And what I mean by that is we really are trying to pivot towards looking at this challenge as an opportunity to reimagine our downtowns and our business districts. We have over 40 million square feet of office space in Arlington County spread over uh, over more than 300 buildings. All, all along a metro corridor that that it makes it pretty dense. Um, and so these business districts are really fundamental to not just our economy, but our tax base and ultimately um, revenue that we can produce uh, to help fund the services of the, of the community that the community expects. And so really what we needed to do first is take a, a shift in our mindset to think of how is this going to be an opportunity for us to do something different? After we kind of started doing that, and that was that was done uh, not just by AED, but we've had other county departments uh, join in this effort, we started what's called the Commercial Market Resiliency Initiative. Uh, we call it CMRI for short. And, and that's really looking at how um, the county can update and modernize our land use regulations so that we can be accepting of market solutions to this problem at a much faster pace. When I got here, what I heard from the, uh, the development and the office uh, owner community was that it took too long to get through our development and land use process. And as a result of that, it, it, it cost way too much money. And so what we're trying to achieve uh, with CMRI is speed to market so that if somebody comes to us and says, I'd like to convert that old office building into apartments or into a hotel or into some other unique creative use, they're not going to be bogged down for many months or even years and in process, and we can help quickly advance that vision into reality. So that's really at a fundamental core what we're trying to do with CMRI, and we're working with partners 
in our in our planning department, in our transportation department, in our county manager's office to make sure that that anybody, any department that touches the development process is aligned with this new thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And then so from the business's perspective, then, you know, what what can they expect then? You know, those those businesses out there that are, you know, either on the verge of renewing leases or maybe considering relocation or adding a adding a location. Well, what we really uh, want to make sure that that future tenants and existing tenants know is that that we're we're open for business here. We want to work with companies and their real estate partners to to get them to either come to Arlington or to or stay and grow here. And we're seeing a a change in in kind of the commercial real estate market in terms of preferences of what companies desire in, in an office space. And so today they're much more focused on uh, meeting spaces and areas for collaboration uh, for when people are in the office. They want to be in high quality buildings, you know, close to amenities uh, with access to transit. And, and so what we're really hoping is that we can create the environment where those high quality offices exist here and companies then have an opportunity to be in Arlington and, and take anything that doesn't meet those standards and do something different with it, whether that's convert it into a different use or fully redevelop that building and that property to make way for something else that can can add to our business district. So we have our business development team out working with companies every single day, trying to not just inform them of what's available in the market, but also to let them know that Arlington is a partner in their success. And so let's uh, let's talk a little more specifically about innovation and what Arlington Economic Development is, is doing to bring innovation to the space. So why don't you start by talking about the Arlington Innovation Fund, you know, what it is, what, what it's helped, what it's helped businesses achieve. Sure. The Innovation Fund is one of our flagship programs. It, it, it was actually just started this fiscal year. It's a $1 million fund and, and it has two goals. One is to set up, uh, we set up a, a what we call our Catalyst Grant Program, which is providing bridge capital to technology startups that are located in Arlington who have raise money and are on their way to their first big series A raise, but they just need a little bit of capital to get them there to kind of keep the lights on. And so uh, this program is has gone through three rounds of, of applications. Um, we're wrapping up the third round and we've already awarded grants of up to $50,000 to five companies and we'll have rounds two and three announced by kind of early summer. And, and what we're really trying to work with through that program is to is to to identify up and coming companies that are going to be the future job creators and hopefully the future tenants of office space who are already here in Arlington and really trying to help accelerate their their growth potential. But the other part of the fund is something that's really I think unique and something that I have to applaud our our business development team for creating and it's called the ecosystem fund or the partnership fund. And what we're doing with that is identifying partners in the startup community who help startups, uh, technology startups, and providing them funding so they can provide even better programming to to entrepreneurs and startups. Um, And so we've funded several accelerators. We have a, um, a program right now with an angel investment organization that's doing a lot of of large networking events in Arlington. And we're also working with George Mason University, which is our anchor university here in Arlington to fund an entrepreneur and residency program. So we're really trying to get this money out into the community to support groups that are already doing the work. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to support innovative and creative organizations in our community to help them grow the startups that are either here already and, and are underway or even trying to encourage entrepreneurs to form companies here. So that program is fortunately been funded for a second year and we'll have new funding starting in July. And, and we're really going to be focusing on that partnership aspect of it because we found that that's 
really a force multiplier. It's helping to make sure that there's resiliency and growth in our startup community. And I think that's a really effective way we've been able to do that so far. Yeah, yeah, that's really great. And great that it was, you know, successful enough to get funded for the the second year as well. Uh, There's another program, CMRI. Uh, Could you talk a little bit about what that is and, and how that benefits Arlington businesses? Yeah, so this is really focused on our our real estate market and particularly the commercial market, uh, office market. And and this is really going to be a benefit for uh, real estate owners and developers that are looking to make investments in Arlington. So for many years, we've attracted interest from uh, developers who want to build office buildings. Um, We have a very dense office market here in Arlington. And that's been that's really been kind of our uh, a, a really strong asset for us for many decades. But with the changing dynamics in the office market as a result of the acceleration of hybrid work and work from home, we really needed to uh, take a hard look at our land use and and um, zoning policies, and frankly modernize them because we, what we were hearing from the development community is that it was just taking too long to to get projects underway in Arlington and and through to completion. And as a result, that was really stymieing new investment in Arlington. And so so in a very hyper-competitive market right now where every downtown in America is trying to reinvent themselves, we felt like our role as a a local government was to make sure that we could have uh, regulations that allowed for speed to market as quickly as possible so that way developers and owners would would know that if they decided to make an investment here, it was going to take them less time and they were going to, as a result, spend less money on process and put more money into their projects. And so for the past two years, we have been working on a host of, of changes to our land use and zoning policies to allow for that. Most notably is is this this summer we will be at, and into the fall taking forward some new regulations that will make it easier for owners of office buildings to convert those buildings into other uses, such as residential or hotel or mixed use commercial, because we have a significant amount of buildings here in Arlington that are just beyond their useful life and will never rent again as office buildings. So rather than have a a big blight on the neighborhood or the local business district, we're trying to put policies in place that will allow for those buildings to transition into a a new and more useful and more vibrant uh, use. Yeah, that's great. Well, also, you know, there's been several high profile moves of prominent organizations to Arlington over the last several years. Um, One which you mentioned already as well, um, which certainly got a lot of press coverage was Amazon's HQ2 uh, located in in Arlington, Virginia. CoStar, uh, another large organization made a recent announcement as well. Uh, Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I would love to. I think the thing that, you know, in addition to our strategic location here in Arlington and having a a, a really well-rounded community. We're also a talent magnet. And as a result of that, companies want to be where the talent is. And so when CoStar began looking for a new office space, two things kind of were, in, a few things were important to them. One, being close to, to talent. They were going to, they were, uh, their company has been growing and expanding significantly in the last couple of years with a, a number of mergers and acquisitions. And so having the workforce uh, availability was really important. They wanted to be in a high quality office building and they identified one of those uh, at 1201 Wilson Boulevard. And and that kind of plays to the ongoing trend we're seeing um, with uh, companies wanting to locate in in what are called trophy or class A office buildings. And CoStar knows this the best because they are the leading analytics uh, company for real estate. So they didn't have to look very far. They just had to open their own database and they found 1201 Wilson. And then the third thing was really as, as they've become more of a global international company, they need access to airports. They need access to transportation routes and being in Virginia next to, to national airport. Now you can take the Metro to Dulles international airport. 
and drive up and down the East Coast to their other uh, large presence in Richmond, Virginia, it kind of made sense to consolidate Virginia. So that was kind of the story and, and the rationale for it. What we did, I think that was a little unique in this deal that that is not the norm for Arlington, but but was what we saw as really important and worthwhile was exchanging a community benefit that was located in 12 in the building at 1201 Wilson for money to put into a another uh, community benefit. Let me explain that a little bit. So when when the building was built, it was built with a observation deck on the top floor that was basically a park. And, and that was because when the building was built, it displaced several parks on, on the ground. And that, and that, that observation deck has been in use, um, but with the pandemic and just with it, it kind of being out of sight, uh, there, there, were, there wasn't a lot of usage of that. And so CoStar offered to pay the county uh, market rate for that space. And as a result, we're going to use that money to to enhance a, a large park in the neighborhood called Gateway Park. And so that exchange is really something we don't do often because once we have a community benefit in Arlington, we tend to hold on to them because we build really good community benefits. But in this case, we kind of saw that we had something that wasn't as optimized as we had hoped it was going to be when it was created. And I think the pandemic taught us that having outdoor spaces where people can gather is really important. And so we're excited that we're going to use CoStar's uh, $14.9 million payment to accelerate Gateway Park by probably a decade, um, the transition of that park. And so we're really excited about that. That's going to add to the to the dynamic, the changing dynamics of the Roslyn neighborhood where CoStar will locate, which is really transitioning from a kind of an office market to a mixed use neighborhood. And so, and so that deal is just kind of, I think, an example of the creative, innovative ways that Arlington County is willing to work with companies and work with our real estate assets to kind of continue to make sure we bring really world-class companies to Arlington who want to invest here, who want to create jobs here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's definitely uh, an innovative way and a creative approach, right, to to working with an organization that is, is definitely bringing something to the, to the area. So, you know, I, I wonder for those uh, organizations out there, again, thinking about whether it's relocating, adding a location or, or other things, you know, how would you kind of summarize this focus on growth and, and innovation and, and what, what kind of sets Arlington apart? Well, for us, I think, our message is we're all in on on tech and innovation in Arlington County. We we have everything that a company, whether you're a startup or you're a major corporation, we have everything you need to succeed here. Starting with our excellent talent base. You know, one thing we haven't talked a lot about is the presence of George Mason University, and uh, happens to be my alma mater, who is building a innovation campus right in the heart of Arlington. And that that is going to add uh, not just to the students who will become future workers, but really important laboratory space where companies can go and be on site with Mason students and partner. It's, it's providing an opportunity for a real focal point around tech and, and the growth of the, of the knowledge economy with programs like Mason's Accelerate Conference, which occurs every fall here in Arlington and where we are now attracting venture capital interest and startups from across the country to come here for several days to pitch their ideas and to make connections. So these are this is just one example of, of what we are able to, to you know, leverage in terms of our, our assets um, and what companies, frankly, can leverage here. And so, you know, my message to folks who might be considering Arlington is, is come and check us out because we're all in on this knowledge economy and we're all in on, on setting up the environment where companies will be able to succeed. Yeah, that's great. Well, Ryan, thanks so much for joining the show. One last question before we wrap up, uh, maybe a little more generally, even, you know, what's a piece of advice that you would have for those organizations out there that are considering relocation or just trying to find the right place for a new location? My first piece of advice is to look up your local economic 
development uh, office and, 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 and schedule time to talk to someone there, um, whether it's the small business consultant or the, the you know, corporate uh, relocation consultant, your local economic development office uh, can help you navigate everything from a real estate decision to how you get licensed to operate to kind of how you can attract and find the right work workers to support your business. We are really kind of the go between between the private sector and and the public sector. And there's a lot of public resources that are available to companies, a lot of which are free. And, and in some cases, we even give you money. So that's a, you know, we really encourage, I really encourage folks to to go online and find your local economic development office uh, here in Arlington. That's arlingtoneconomicdevelopment.com. We'll be happy to talk to you and uh, figure out where your best fit is in the Arlington uh, economy. That's great. Well, again, I'd like to thank Ryan Tuhill, Director of Economic Development at Arlington Economic Development for joining the show. You can learn more about Ryan and Arlington Economic Development by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to the Innovation Economy Podcast, brought to you by Arlington Economic Development. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes at www.innovationeconomy.show or on your podcast platform of choice. The Innovation Economy is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, let's keep innovating.